Hey guys, it's Michael with Real Street Performance. I'm here with Mark Mazurowski of Mazurworks Manufacturing. In front of us is the first Dart 2JZ Iron Eagle engine that's going to be used in our engine program. Today we're going to take a look at this Dart Iron Eagle block versus a Toyota Casting 2JZ block from the factory. We're going to give you a behind the scenes of machining and assembly. So let's go to the back and get started. So we're back here in your engine assembly room, and I want to know your first thoughts on this because this thing is this thing's pretty beefy. It's awesome. I want to hear everything you have to say. Well, the first thing is it definitely has more iron. Just by getting it on the cart, you can tell just by feel it's, it's heavier than a, than an OEM block. So we can tell there's more iron in it. Also, looking at it, you can see that they incorporated the, the threaded freeze plugs and the threaded old port plugs, which makes it easier for serviceability when it comes back after it's been ran. The plugs are easy to get out, it's better, you know, you can clean the whole block inside out mm -hmm. versus pipe plugs, which sometimes if they're tightened too much, you can't get pipe plugs out. So you end up having to, to extract them. Mm -hmm. Also too, it looks pretty much easily swappable with a with an OEM block because it has all the provisions for the motor mounts. I mean, everything's in its right place, visually just looking at it. Um, it's not over-engineered as far as being, you know, too blocky, it, it, it maintains the shape like a factory block would. So Mark just pulled up a standard 2JZ Toyota engine that he has worked on and we have the dart block here and I'd like to look at some of the differences obviously between the two and get your opinions on that as well. Yeah, the OEM block you can see the webbing or the, the deck thickness is roughly two to three hundred thousandths visually and dart is advertising about three quarters of an inch or um, 19 millimeters as you can see. Don't confuse that with, with deck height, it's the deck thickness which overall helps out with rigidity especially with a uh, gasket seal. And the OEM block has the the cross drill holes right here where they X about they X down about an inch down in the cylinder and this block doesn't have it. When we've had these engines come back after it ran pretty hard you can see the heat marks from those cooling jackets so obviously in the dart block they're not going to have that issue. Uh, you can see here where the, you have the connection between the head stud, the main stud, and the main journal on this OE block where all the journals are pretty much look the same as where you know the, the OEs took out some cavities to save weight, you know, to save material, and to engineer it to what specific needs they needed. Whereas the dart block, they just made it solid so they maximized what they can with the block. Alright, comparing the two blocks, you can see on the factory block where the deck surface is, you can see where it steps in. And even looking down on the water jacket, you can see where it step, you know, where the water jacket will step in too. So the outer walls of this block are definitely thinner. Going to the dart block, when you analyze it, the deck, it, the block goes straight down. So it's, it's solid. There's a lot more iron in it. And also you can see on the OEM block between each cylinder and main journal, there's a lot of pocketing to save material that the OE designed into their block. And on the dart block, they pretty much filled each one of those in for maximum rigidity. Well, classically on the OE blocks, we would main cap them at roughly 800 horsepower. Mm -hmm. And then at about 1200 horsepower, using the ARP block studs, we would start seeing the caps bounce transfer material. Mm -hmm. So we would then go up to the custom H625 studs and, and they would last to the point where we would next thing we would see with block fail. Mm -hmm. So it looks to me that Dart forecasted that. Obviously the block's gonna hold more power, so they would need to reinforce the main cap area where they went looks like they went from a metric 10 stud to a metric 12 as a main stud and a metric 10 as the outer stud to forecast a block making more power so therefore the, the caps need more reinforcement out of the box dart states that this block is just ready to be honed so what we're going to do first thing is, is check the line bore to see if it's within spec and also check the deck height the OE spec is about a six tenths wide which is pretty tight spec for a main journal usually like a one thousand spec so yeah so this one's about five tenths over the minimum spec so it's, it's just on the high side, but with spec. So that's good. That's one less machining process that needs to be done to get this block ready to assemble. So we're gonna measure vertical height. So we're gonna zero it out on the deck and do a bore, um, to find the center of the bore and it'll tell us what, what the, the deck height is. Yeah, so it is a little tall. Eight, six, three, one. And about nine, taller than OE. 
And on Darton's instructions, they, they already tell you that it, uh, the deck's gonna be a little bit taller than factory. Mm -hmm. It leaves you room for machining. At this point with the dart block, you can, as a builder, you can make the decision. Do you wanna keep it tall? Mm -hmm. You know, you might lower your compression a little bit, but it leaves room for serviceability, or you can bring it down a little bit or all the way to make a flush with your package. So really anyone at that point can have their, their choice with their builder. And exactly. From that from there. exactly, that's really cool.
back here at Real Street Performance, we're officially up and running with our Iron Eagle 2JZ block ready to go. I'm super pumped. This thing is gonna totally kick some ass. It's gonna make a ton of power. It's an 86-85 with a 3.5 liter. I mean, you're ready for it. I'm ready for it. I wanna get moving on this thing. Let's make some damn power. Thank you everyone so much for the comments lately on our videos. They've been really helpful. You've given us a lot of great suggestions and great feedback that we're all working with. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.